Academy Award winning animation director, producer Nick Park, and animation directors Will Beecher and Merlin Crossingham are here. And we're going to talk about Early Man. Gentlemen, thank you for doing this. Oh. It's good to see your happy, smiling faces. You're all, <laughs> you all have the same smile template there going. <laughs> it's um, our last day, that's why. <laughs> before we talk about the movie, uh, to work for Ardman Animation, what, what personality traits or characteristics would one need to possess in order to qualify? Um, I think you need uh, passion for whatever creative element you're contributing uh, without doubt whether it's in the art department model making animation um or any of the support you know support people who um are not necessarily creating something that'll be seen on the screen but make everything else possible i think a passion and a love for what we do are sort of runs under everything and and it really helps if you enjoy what you're doing and you you, you, you love what good. you're doing yeah, yeah. for sure yeah. Uh, I'd well. agree with that and and add to it probably that also you need to be very personable because communication is really vital. So um, there's very few bad attitudes at work. Everyone generally is on the same wavelength and that's really key. <laughs> yeah, and and to do the animation, it's, it's like, um, I mean, people say maybe you need patience which is is sort of true but uh you need to have st staying power and uh and also the ability to act in a sense of comedy in 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 the terms of the kind of work we do well i i ask that too because i've found and we've, we've had lots of different guests on this program and we've interviewed countless people but i think and and i think my staff would agree with this that we enjoy most, for whatever reason, talking to animators, and I don't. And I and and I don't. I mean, I know. I don't know. I, I mean, I know why that is, but I just wanted to. You know, there there there's a there's a a certain freedom I think that animators have in terms of just the way they walk through the world. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to um, and, and we don't get out much you don't get out much <laughs> so yeah all that kind stop of, motion it's stuff, nice right? to meet it's, people it's and nice to meet we're just used to talking to clay <laughs> figures and... all right so let's move to early man <laughs> um uh the title early man which which given the current uh, social climate in the in the country in the u.s especially in hollywood some might say that's a politically incorrect t title uh from perhaps a more like patriarchal era um can, can we get a crash course here of the movie's plot, which will be far more interesting sounding coming from you guys than it would from me? Yeah, well, well it's, a, it's about this uh, plucky young caveman called Doug and he, with his pet hog, hog, Hognob. And he lives in a really sort of daffy, idiotic, uh, sort of backward tribe. But they love their homeland and their valley. And one day this mighty Bronze Age leader with the, all the might, mammoths and, and might of bronze come in and take their valley because they want it they want it for the bronze and so it's a, a really a question of how can this lowly um, tribe fight back for their homeland and, and uh, they can't use their, 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 their stone age axes and clubs are no good against bronze might so Doug finds a way he finds that their their um, bron the bronze religion is soccer and and he challenges them to a game of this game they've never played before, or so we think. Yeah, the, the poster tagline declares, uh, "Yeah, it's a little epic." <laughs> <laughs> Which <laughs> I want I want to I want to talk a little about mm -hmm. uh, later. But you, you you were pointing to the to the figures there. Uh, those now were the were those are these one of several, or were these the ones actually used in the film? Um, yeah, these are the the film stars you're seeing here, the ones that we and the animation team physically manipulate in front of camera. Um, and there are multiple versions of them just so that we can create such a big uh, feature film in the length of time that we need. So we had about 35 animators. So it's really because of the time. It's not due to the wear and tear on them, maybe? <clears throat> no, there is. Um, there's a amazing sort of ongoing... Um, replenishment that happens because elements of these characters are made of clay and those those parts need sculpting and replacing um, but generally speaking it is because we've got 
at any one time we've got about 30 to 40 different uh, shots happening at the same time in the film. Well, why are the models uh, in stop motion animation the size that they are? They they seem smaller than they should be to me. Um, it, it, it's it's something that in our studio has evolved over time, and this scale works very well for what we're doing. If you make them too much smaller than this, you can't get the detail in such a satisfying way. And if you go any larger, actually, you encounter physical problems. Uh, well, the sets, for a start, we, we have a 51,000-foot studio, square-foot yeah. studio, and, and that's not quite big enough. You know? So we're using up a lot of space as, is, as it is. But just physically making them stand up and having their internal structures work on a larger scale is just technically really difficult. And um, also we sculpt, we make the characters with our hands. So we sculpt with our hands, and, and that's oh. where a lot of these shapes come from just uh, the way we sculpt. Um, and so it's, it's something that we've... Yeah, over the 40 years of the studio, it, this is the sort of the optimum that we've arrived at. I've always had a hesitant time in trying to describe the look of Ardman to people. Of course, you say Wallace and Gromit, and people immediately know what that look is. But to kids who are being introduced for the first time, how would you describe the Ardman look? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Ardman look. Well, well, actually, there are um, the way Peter Lord and David Sproxton, the founders of the studio, the way they have always thought is to uh, employ a diversity of different styles. And uh, with the, what I guess people you know go by Wallace and Gromit because that's one of our main things, which uh, which I was you know very much involved in bringing. Um, and I guess it's 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 eyes close together, wide mouths. Uh, dumpy noses, uh, everything a bit round and a bit. The um, teeth too the are teeth. very prominent. Oh, of course, yeah. the teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Any, anything to add to that? Or, yeah. Which, if that was something you you mm. said to somebody, say in pitching, um, the idea, they might think, oh, I don't mm. know, that doesn't sound like it's going to work, but it works. Mm. Um, right. It kind of. Um, the part of the reason it came about was that actually, I mean, I always went for the eyes close together because it, it gives a sort of uh, a, a funny, googly look and a sort of connection with the audience, like the way <laughs> Gromit looks. Uh, uh, but Wallace had quite a straight face to start with. It's only when the actor, Peter Salas, said the word cheese, and that's when his mouth went suddenly massive, and that, that sort of helped establish that style. I, I like I like the adjective googly. I don't know if I've ever heard it before, but it's it's it very yeah. It it conjures up something. Yeah. <laughs> Just listening to to Nick saying that as well, it, it gave me the thought that actually these not only are the eyes very close together, but they're they're nearly always very bright and wide. It gives all the characters a sort of naive, wide optimism um and the animation team they love putting eyelids and doing lots of acting with eyelids. that's that's it i think that i think that's what distinguishes it, is the eyes and it just made me think of the thing that um i, I think it was george cuker when he was asked about film acting movie acting he said w what accounts for really good film acting he said well it, it, it's the eyes. He said 80% of good film acting is, is in the eyes. I don't know. And then, yeah, although those are very, sometimes they're kind of bizarre, something in the eyes, but, <laughs> yeah. but you know, that's interesting. I didn't, I never thought, I didn't mean to interrupt you yeah. while you were no, saying, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you guys, what is the difference between the, the, the title of you, you're, you're the director of this picture. You guys are animation directors. Could you, what, what, what could you explain the difference between the two? Yeah, and it's come about really because in the early when we started, we used to uh, direct feature films. Two, ha you know, two people were directing uh, and sharing the direction, and that's a kind of a model we've taken from the Disney Studios and when we were DreamWorks, and uh, and because there's such a massive amount to preside over. Uh, and in this one, I wanted to try directing alone. But that means you've got to really have a strong structure beneath you to, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, th this is why Will and Merlin are here. Uh, we, we've all worked together a lot on Wallace and We very much think and have the same humor and sensibilities. And so you, you've got to have a strong team to, to be able to relay, you know, what's in my head in this case, uh, uh, to, to my animation directors, because they then take all that to the studio floor and, interpret all that and and direct the whole teams of animators and model makers is that a good um, mm. yeah 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 i mean we um 
everything everything stems from Nick's vision, and I guess we are trying to cover a lot of the ground physically, the time it takes to get around the the studio. It's very labour intensive. So. Yeah, we had um, on an average day, Will and I would never see each other. There's so much to do that we'd be, you know, pretty much split the movie down the middle, um, and um, yeah, so with Nick sort of overseeing everything and making sure it's all going the way he wants, mainly in edit, and Will and I... Mm-hmm. I mean, Nick was down on the studio floor, but it was mainly Will and I driving, driving the, um, the studio floor, you know, with the, working with the director of photography in the art department to, uh, to bring the vision up onto the screen. Well, what is the role of um, CGI when you're doing stop-motion animation? Do you have any commandments on how not to use it? Well, okay. um, because they, you know, the, the, the uh, you know, we were really keen to keep it as uh, stop frame, you know, stop motion as possible with real, you know, it's the real figures and, the, you know, the fingerprints and the textures that are important and the way stop frame characters move. Um, and so as we, uh, you know, there are many ways we, you know, we had to go to CG and digital uh, technology to expand the universe that we're in because there were so many new things and expansive landscapes, prehistoric landscapes, uh, you know, with lava and volcanoes and all, all kinds of stuff that are hard to do with clay uh, and cr- you know, crowds of thousands in the stadium. But we would be very meticulous about keeping the style consistent, even, th- you know, to th- so that it carries on from the stop frame to the CGI, so it doesn't look different. Um, oh, so they, they lay together very well. Anything you want to add? No, I think that's... Um, yeah, I'll just... Um, that while it's a, definitely a stop-motion movie, we didn't say, well, we're not going to use CG or we're not going to use digital. It's whatever's best for the movie. You know, if, if for Nick's vision it needs a stadium full of 35,000, you could make 35,000 puppets but you'd still be doing it sort of in 10 years time. And, yeah. and there's, you know, there's a sort of a, a deadline. How, how long did this film take from conception to execution to what we see now? What, what, it was many years. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I think altogether from, from the first idea, you know, from first sketches, writing right through storyboarding, set building, character design, and then the actual animation itself um, about, about five years altogether, maybe five or six years. Um, and um, the actual animation itself took place in the last 18 months. Now, is that, yeah. that, that's pretty much five, six years of continuous work. I mean, do you guys ever do anything else other than that? Uh, for example, you, you, you literally spent the last five, six, five or six years of your life on this project. Well, yeah. and, uh, Nick, well, Nick certainly did. Um, and I got involved about two and a half years into the process. So... Um, uh, the crew sort of grows from, you know, from just a very small core group doing the, the writing, Nick and Mark, and then it slowly builds up. So the full 100 and sort of 50 people are working full time for about a year or, or, or two years on the feature. I was just wondering how you would keep your sense of perspective about just everyday living when you're, you know, that, that absorbed in, in creatively in a project like it, this. Well, you, you do get lost in it. And it's kind of important that you do yeah. because you have to live it and breathe it and believe it. Um, but one of the other problems with that is that w- when such a long time span is involved, things, jokes especially, when, when Nick's written a joke sort of five years ago and uh-huh. that joke, you've lived with it for five years, I guarantee it's not funny kind of at <laughs> the end of, and you just sort of have to stick with your sort of initial hunch that, that it was going to work. And, um, and and but when it's animated, you could it sort of lives on paper for a long time, and then and then when it's animated, it's great to see it actually deliver. Yeah, right, you know, right. that's that's a sort of a real payoff. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I always like in Ardman likes just some of the aside jokes that you that, that they're not even really paid any attention to, like that, like the bum soft uh, bathroom <laughs> tissue, things like that. Where if you blink, you miss it, but but if you're watching it, you go, oh yeah, you, know. you, you wouldn't believe the sort of high powered meetings that go on to discuss <laughs> those bet, yeah. those names. And just some of the ways, like I, what was it when when the queen? There was a scene I think where the queen was offered some food, and she says some, she says something like "stuff your nibbles." Yes. <laughs> it's like yeah, what a, yes. what a clever way of rebuking the the. Uh, uh, 
uh, <laughs> the offer. Um, uh, and, and Nick, you uh, you you voiced one of these characters. Oh. You want to point out uh, who Hognob is there? Oh uh, yes, yes. Well, it, it kind of happened by accident, but we uh, yeah, he is he is Hognob, my, my character, uh, Doug's pet pig. And um, it kind of happened by accident because we, you know, we put the whole film together first in storyboards and uh, in the edit machine and we put uh, temporary music and voice track, you know, scratch voices. We do a lot of the voices ourselves just to see how the scenes are shaping up. And I was always doing Hognob uh, just for fun, really. And um, yeah, um, when it came to casting, of course, I was looking for someone sophisticated and uh, <laughs> a thespian. Um, but uh, you've but, sort of mastered the art of like semi unintelligible gibberish. I don't even, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know how I would that's describe good. the voice that's, of Hognob. That's like Nick's directing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and then that song too that you sing with the harp. I mean, that's oh yeah. I never thought I'd ever. What is that? And it sounded so right, but. It's like, what is that? Where did that come from? <laughs> it was, it was just, kind of, <laughs> it was yeah. just kind of made up, really, on the spot. I, I, uh, you know, I was just doing this hog. It was like a sort of more primitive sort of Scooby Doo, really. Is what I had in my head, and um, and, and I never thought I'd ever hear myself singing on the big screen. <laughs> See, look at that! Yeah. <laughs> How cool is that? Okay, well, the movie is really terrific. Uh, uh, it's called you. Early Man. Uh, we've been in conversation with uh, director-producer Nick Park, uh, animation directors Will Beecher and Merlin Crossingham. Merlin, well, how did you come to be called Merlin? Oh, my parents are here. You were a magical baby. Yeah, a magical yeah. baby. No, right time, right place in the 70s. And there you go. Okay. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much. It was, it was, it was a pleasure. Great, Great. fun. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.